Yes, my name's John G. Sutton, and welcome to Tales from the Jails. Today we have a special request from uh, one of our regular supporters, uh, a very famous man, actually. Got a bare knuckle fight, yeah, one of them, yeah, the, roll and all, the one and only, Rolly Pickering! Yes, folks, he requests that we talk a little bit, or I talk a little bit, about the hangings at Strangeways Jail. Uh, now, I did never ever witness a hanging at Strangeways Jail. The the gallows were there when I was there at the end of B1, in a special unit at the end of B1. But uh, the hangings had seized in 1963 and I started in 1975. There were staff there who had been around when they were hanging, of course there were. And, uh, but I wasn't one of them. But, this is the God's honest truth. I did encounter one of the hangmen. I was uh, on nights, uh, and this particular night I was put in charge of the of the wing B B wing. And now, when you're in charge of the wing, you go around and count everybody. You know, you count everybody in the cells. Just make sure you've got everybody in there. You know. And uh, I was going around, start at the top, and I got down to the ones. It would be about half past nine, something like that, and uh, I was going along B1 landing, and a, a man walked past me, he was wearing a, a very dark suit, collar and tie, a hat on his head, and uh, carrying a black bag, and I, and I knew that nobody should be in the prison at that time of night, only the staff, yeah, because it's locked up, completely locked up, locked at the front gate, locked at all the gates, everybody's locked in, only the staff. So I thought, who is this? So I quickly went after him, and uh, I saw him go up the stairs on B1, up the up the metal stairs onto the rotunda, the area, central area, uh, at Strange Ways in the middle of the recall at the rotunda, yeah. Uh, but I couldn't see him when I got up there. He wasn't there, and I went to see the principal officer who was in in charge of the place, and I said, listen, there's somebody just come down B1 landing. He's about five foot eight, five foot nine, wearing a dark suit, collar and tie, hat on his head and a black bag, walked straight past me, ignored me completely, went up the stairs, and here I am, where is he? He shouldn't be in this prison. I don't know him. He's not one of the governors. He's nobody I recognise. Uh, have you seen him? Have you let him out? You know, where is he? And the principal officer said, no, he says, you have not seen anybody. He says, what you've seen is uh, a, a discarnate being, a spirit, the ghost. I said, I've seen a ghost, have I? Go on then, who is it? He said, uh, the man's name is John Ellis. John Ellis. And he was the hangman at Strangeways. And he said, uh, John Ellis had a very troubled life. Uh, it, it, his profession actually affected him. In the past, John Ellis had ex executed people like... Uh, uh, Harvey Crippen, Dr. Crippen, yeah? That was one of the people he executed. Uh, but one of his executions had absolutely driven him insane, apparently. Uh, he executed a woman who was unbeknownst to the, the medical staff and the prison. She was pregnant at the time, and when she went through the drop, yeah, and it broke her neck, it, she continued down, snap, and uh, it, it uh, forced her to have an instant miscarriage, which everything came away and came out of her body, splattered all over the floor of the uh, execution room uh, underneath the gallows. And apparently that had driven John Ellis uh, over the edge. And following that execution, although he continued to work, he was never the same, apparently. This was the story that was told to me, and eventually he committed suicide. At the second attempt, he tried once before and blew his jaw off by shooting himself, and uh, he eventually did manage to kill himself. And uh, it was a recognised fact that numerous staff over the years, he died he killed himself about 1923 or something like that, and over the years his ghost has been seen many times walking along B1 landing, because B1, at the end of B1, 
at the far away from the rotunda, that was where the, the gallows were and the condemned cell, and he was frequently seen as a spirit walking along there. So no, I haven't witnessed any hangings at strange ways, other than the informal ones. You know, the ones where the inmates decide that uh, they're not keen on the accommodation and they decide to terminate their lives. No, I've been to a number of them and cut the people down and done my best to resuscitate them, you know, but if somebody's been up there for half an hour, you know, it's not going to work. Uh, and uh, a number of people do that. One or two we've helped survive and they've been thankful that, 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 we, that we've done that. But quite a few actually uh, managed to kill themselves. And uh, let me tell you this, there's a spate in the 1970s at Strange Ways of uh, a rumour went round the jail about cell fires. It said if you, if you were involved in a cell fire and survived all right, then you, you, you got... Uh, your, shen your sentence was commuted and you were allowed out. It was an utter absolute nonsense nothing like that ever happened no but there were numerous cell fires the problem with the cell fires was it wasn't the fire that killed the inmates the actual mattresses were made out of a foam and the foam when it was ignited emitted uh, like a, a cyanide gas and that killed the inmates it was extremely dangerous. There was one cell fire I went to, and uh, obviously two of the inmates, there was three in the cell, two of the inmates had obviously wanted to try this trick of causing a cell fire and ringing the bell and, and being saved by the staff, except on this occasion the third inmate didn't want to take part, obviously, uh, and he'd been beaten up and tied to a metal chair, and uh, that's how we found him dead, and they're all dead, because they died from cyanide poisoning, from the, the gas that was emitted by the, the mattresses. Yeah. Uh, the staff actually got an, uh, had an idea to deal with this. They punched out the Judas holes, bashed the glass through with a truncheon, and stuck a fire hose and blasted all the, the, the fire out with, with a fire hose aimed into the cell. There's another way of... Uh, killing people in strange ways which for a while was quite probably still is quite popular not with the people who get on the receiving end of course but anyway they get a, a toothbrush and they split the end and they get a razor blade put the razor blade into the toothbrush tie it up with wire so they've got themselves a homemade knife you know an homemade ship and like, shit like that cut you hmm one of my colleagues got cut from round about here on his temple, right down his face, right, and it missed his jugular vein. Only just missed his jugular vein. A big flap of skin came out, and blood all over the place. It was an absolute mess. He had about a hundred stitches in it. You know, it was a real mess. And uh, he survived, of course. He was absolutely on the front page of one of the newspapers, I think it was Daily Star or something like that. But as for witnessing hangings at, at Strange Ways, no, I didn't witness any hangings. But I did meet the hangman. And that's today's tale from the jail. I sincerely hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. <laughs>